What's up everybody, hitting trainer John Saropoulos. We're here in the cage with St. Louis Cardinals outfielder Lars Dubar. We're gonna go through a training session. We're gonna show you some of the drills we do, some of the flip drills we do, and then eventually we're gonna hit fastballs off the machine. Lars, you ready to go? Ready to roll. Let's get after it. All right, so first drill we're starting off with is the high tee. So tee's gonna be just a little below chest height. This is a really good drill for Lars because it helps him with his load. And then also where he's landing at heel strike, so he's not getting too uphill. Really helps with his bat path and a lot of his ball flight goals. Lars, when you do this drill, what, what are you focused on when you're executing this drill? Um, keeping my upper, upper body posture. Rotating well and also like staying between like five to ten degrees on my launch angle. Nice. Let's go one more. Perfect grab. Perfect grab. Alright, so the next drill we got, T set down just lower, like in the strike zone. We call this the one foot drill. It's really good for teaching hitters how to like not side bend early when they rotate or for hitters that get too crunched, right? So Lars is gonna show us how to do it right here. Now we're getting into the flip portion, the, a lot of the constraint drills that we're gonna do. First drill, Lars got the long bat, that's our 37 inch, 37 ounce implement. Really good because the point of contact is gonna be farther away from the hitter, so they gotta get comfortable hitting the ball out here. He's gonna do the hook em drill first, so that's this one, hook em long bat, with uh, the intent to hit to right center field. Lars, when you do this drill, uh, any type of cues, any type of things you're thinking, what does a good rep look like in your mind? Good rep. Looks like a back spun hard line drive to like right center field. Here we go, let's do it. So next drill we got, we're doing the hook'em again to put Lars in a good loaded position, but we're gonna use the fungo. So the long bat is 37 ounces, that's an overload implement. This fungo right here is gonna be 25 ounces, so it's an underload, underload implement. Still longer, so the point of the sweet spot's farther away from the hitter's body. We still gotta get comfortable hitting the ball out here, but we're gonna be moving faster than we move our game bat, right? So it's a really good implement to teach you guys how to turn and hit balls hard to the pull side. Instead of baseballs, we're gonna be feeding these smash balls because the fungo can't really hit baseballs that well, but we have these smash balls that are bouncy. So they're a little easier to hit with the fungo and you still get like the feedback of ball flight and how well you squared it up or not, okay? So Lars, when you're using the fungo instead of the long bat, do you feel anything different? Are you cueing yourself anything different? Or are you kind of just swinging away and aiming for right field? I'm kind of just swinging away, kind of swinging, trying to swing hard. Like I said before, like obviously I have an intent to go to the full side yeah. with this thing, like get comfortable out front, but uh -huh. I'm just trying to hit the ball hard. And then with the smash balls, how hard are you trying to hit these guys in flips? Anywhere above like 115. at 115 or bust. Nice. So that was uh, the fungo with the smash balls. Now we're gonna go half swings with the long bat and baseballs, and then half swings with the fungo. And the smash balls four and four are gonna try and blend the implements. And then after that, we're gonna do the short bat, game bat, and then we're gonna get off the machine, all right? So we're gonna go with long bat. Okay, next round we got the short bat. So the long bat is 37 inches, 37 ounces. This guy is 28 inches, 31 ounces. So it's game weight, but the length is shorter. So this is really good for teaching hitters how to add side bend when they swing. It's also good for teaching hitters how to learn to get like the lower pitch in the air off the ground and maybe get some more slug on pitches lower in the zone, which is why we're using it with Lars. Lars, when you use the short bat, are you just worried about hitting line drives, keeping it off the ground, or are you trying to work right field still too? Still right center, but mainly, like you said, like side bend, getting that low pitch, making sure I'm not just like peppering it in the ground. Sweet, so we're gonna go flips with baseball. Oh, 
All right, so last round of flips, uh, we're just going game bat. You'll notice we have a sensor on here. This is the blast motion sensor. Check me out. It's gonna give us his bat speed. So that last swing was at 80.1 miles per hour attack angle and then some other measurements. It's gonna give him the feedback after every swing. We wanna get ready for taking game swings off the machine. So Lars, during your game arounds, you're just doing the same thing, taking your approach that you're gonna take off the machine into the flip round, hoping it translates? Yeah. Okay. All right, so this is Lars's last day in the facility. We want to make sure we send him off to spring training, ready and geared up to hit the fastball. So check this out. We got the machine set up on 95 miles per hour, uh, 2,350 spin, which is kind of close to average. You see the spin axis is right at 1130. So this is a pretty standard left-handed fastball, 95 miles per hour. Uh, again, because when we go to spring training, we want to be timed to hit the fastball. So check this out. Perfect. All right, now we're gonna get into the machine portion of the training session. Lars, when you hit the machine, so this is like game speed, 95 mile per hour, lefty heater. What are you trying to accomplish in the box in this environment off the machine? Um, aggressive on a fish that I can I can hammer and then uh, making sure my point of contact is out in front. That's the main thing. Okay, sick. What about what about on the blast? Are you looking at that with bat speed? You're more focused on ball flight, or maybe a little bit of both? A little bit of both. The when I when I hit off the machine, I'll first take a look at my bat speed. If it's below a certain number, then I won't even count the rep because it's not a good one. And then if, I, if I see that that's that's where it should be, then I'll take a look at the, at the hit tracks and see. All right, time to get this work. <laughs> Two. Lars, so when we train off the machine, I know you like to do rounds of four, keep the keep the volume down with the intensity high. What's yeah. your reasoning behind that off a pitch like this? Just so on a game like pitch where it's like high intensity like this, I like to get as much as I can out of each swing. If I take a round of like 10 or 12, some of my swings might, you know, like decrease in bat speed or effort or intent. So having four there is like max effort, get it all out and then relax for like two to three minutes in between rounds. There you have it, that's an in the cage session with St. Louis Cardinals outfielder, Lars Newport from El Segundo, California. We did our T work, we did our flip work, and then we hit the 95 mile power fastball out of the machine. Lars, you got any takeaways, anything you want to tell any of the baseball players and parents out there that are gonna watch this, anything they can take away with them into the cage or into their training? Yeah, I mean, the main focus is obviously bat speed and then doing full distance machine, make it as game-like as possible, so when you get in the game, you're not as shocked by the environment. Um, that's kind of what we do here, try to try to replicate the game as much as possible. So that's about it. If you're interested in training, make sure you give us a call at our support line, 425-523-4030. Again, that's 425-523-4030. Or email our support team at support at drivelinebaseball.com. Support at drivelinebaseball.com. Thanks again for watching. We'll see you in another one.